Today is the 7th of January 2024. I am in Abu Dhabi and I am on the location of the soon to be inaugurated BAPS Hindu Mandir in Abu Dhabi and that's what I'm going to talk about today. It's, a, it's an exclusive sneak peek into the Mandir before it is inaugurated. It's going to be inaugurated in February by Prime Minister Mr. Modi and we're going to go inside the Mandir, take a, take a look at the place and I'm going to give you a sneak peek at what's happening over here and what the Mandir looks like before it is inaugurated. So that's what we're going to do. Please follow along. So as you can see, I've climbed up the steps of the mandir. It's it's a grand, majestic, big structure, very large structure. And the story is very interesting. So in 1997, uh, Pramukh Swami Maharaj, who was then the head, the, the principal head of the BAPS organization, had visited Sharjah. On top of a sand dune in Sharjah, he made a prayer for world peace, for unity, for, for harmony and peace among all people. And he made a wish that one day there would be a Hindu mandir in Abu Dhabi and at that time it was a different world that we lived in and such a thought such a wish such an idea was well some people would call it absurd and absurd and some people may have laughed at it but here we are a quarter century later and we actually have this grand Hindu mandir in Abu Dhabi and this mandir has been built on land donated by his royal highness the crown prince of Abu Dhabi it's it's been a very generous gesture of the government of Abu Dhabi and the UAE and that's how this has happened. So this is a magnificent structure as you can see much of it is complete it's just 35 days to go for the inauguration as you can see there's construction happening all over the place a lot of finishing touches being put and some other touches also being put on the mandir and as you can see the pillars are all more or less in place the shikhars the domes of the mandir seven in all are all already in place the kalashes are in place the uh, flags are in place and uh, we can take a further look at the actual structure because it's an intricately carved structure. The pink stone that you see is all, it is all sandstone that's been brought in from Rajasthan and inside the white pillars and the white structures inside are made of Italian marble which has been brought in from Italy, probably the same place where the quarry for, for, where the quarry for Michelangelo's sculptures happened and that Italian marble was brought back to Rajasthan where extremely skilled artisans carved it and now it's been Put into place over here. So let's take a look at some of the some of the designs and carvings on the walls because these are incredibly beautiful and interesting stories behind them. So as you can see, we have the traditional Indian birds over here, the parrots. We also have falcons over here, which is the national bird of the UAE. And then we have these these tableaus of stories representing various values from all over the world. This is probably a, a Mesoamerican culture, Incas or Mayas or Aztecs, which one is this? This one is a story from the life of King King Suleiman, who, is an, who was an Arabic king and so on. In each of these stories represents certain values, certain universal values. And the purpose, the intent of all this is to make everybody welcome in this mandir. Not just Indians, not just Hindus, but people from all over the world. Everyone is welcome here and that's the uh, principle behind this. So we have carvings of various traditional Indian animals and birds, lions, tigers, peacocks, parrots. We also have falcons, we also have camels and so on. So it's something that represents a melting pot of, of the best the world has to offer. And it's also a homage to the Arabian Peninsula and to the nation that has so magnanimously hosted this temple. Oh yeah, so, so that's what, what it's about. And as you can see, every single pillar, every single carving is unique. None of it is duplicated. None of this is duplicated. It's all unique. And you can just imagine the thought that must have gone behind this, the planning that must have gone behind this. All of this, these carvings were done by artisans from Rajasthan who traditionally uh, used to do these carvings in temples. So it's about 1,000 to 5,000 uh, artisans in total. All that, that, And that's the only a uh, number of artisans you have in the entire world that is capable of doing this. So these are the people who are employed to do this. All the carvings were done on site in Rajasthan in India and shipped over here. And that's how 
we have all this here. It's almost in place now, 35 years ago. Let's take a look at what's over there. So as you can see over here, there is a carving of Vayuputra Hanumanji over here. Then let's come forward. If we look over here, we can see uh, scenes from the life and career of Lord Shri Ram, Bhagwan Shri Ram himself, from the writing of the Ramayana by, by Valmiki Ji, all the way to various events, various important events in the life of uh, Shri Ram and his family. And these represent various universal values that, that the world should aspire to live up to. So that's what it is. So we have, so there are seven domes, seven shikhars in total. And under each of these shikhars, there will be a, a murti of a, of a different Hindu god. So it's not just a Swaminarayan temple, it's, a, it's, it's not a, so just a Swaminarayan mandir, it's a Hindu mandir which includes all the major divinities in the pantheon of Hinduism. And on each of the panels you have the life and, and stories of each of these seven uh, major Hindu gods and goddesses. That's what we have. Let's go inside now. Let's take a look at inside, how it is inside. So I'm entering from one of the entrances. Let's go in. So as you can see, it's all white marble in here. Beautiful sculptures, beautiful carvings. Each of these pillars is absolutely entirely unique. There are no repeating elements either on various uh, various parts of the pillars. Everything is absolutely unique, which is something that you probably won't find in too many places in the world. Let's see some more. So for example, this is marble. It's the pillar of pillars. As you can see, it's made of tiny little pillars on that all make up this large pillar. And you can imagine how much <laughs> how much effort must have gone into this. You break any one of these elements, you have to start all over again. So it's something that's that's incredible. It's an incredible feat, feat of uh, architecture, one would say, and carving, and art, and aesthetics. And each of these pillars, little pillars, is slightly different from all its other brothers and sisters. So that's what we have. And behind us, we have the various alcoves or various uh, places where the various murtis will be kept. So Hindus of all denominations, of all, all philosophies who belong to whichever philosophical school of thought can come here and congregate together. It's going to be a place of spiritual togetherness. It's going to be a spiritual shelter for all Dharmic people in the UAE and this part of the world, the Middle East. So it's the first of its kind in the entirety of the, of the Middle East. Uh, so that's what we have and we have incredibly beautiful ceilings. The, the kind of carvings you have on each of the ceilings is incredible. I mean, each ceiling is different. We have grand ceilings, we have smaller ones. Let's take a look at the ceiling of Harmony. So this is the Shikhar of Harmony. We have various Hindu elements from, from Hindu philosophy and, and spirituality over here. We have the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and Akash. All of that over here. Please excuse the noise, the sound, because it's a work in progress over here. And that's how it's gonna be. We, we are taking a sneak peek inside the mandir before it is inaugurated, while it is still essentially under construction. So we are actually in the middle of the desert over here, right? Yeah, we are in the middle of the desert. The Arabian desert. The Arabian desert, yes. Absolutely, nice. Imagine that, the temple coming up in the middle of the Arabian desert. So our current spiritual guru, he calls it a lotus rising in the desert. Sorry? A lotus blossoming in the sand oh, I see, as I it's see. rising in the desert. Yes. Whenever you usually build temples, or not temples, any building in mm -hmm. the desert, mm -hmm. you need to dig down further to hit some sort of sandstone or anything, mm -hmm. very good foundation. Something hard. Something hard. Yeah. So over here, we were expecting the same thing. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of excavation to find it. But as soon as they dug down one meter down, they found such a thick strata of sandstone that the structural engineer said that this temple will be like a pigeon sitting on the back of an elephant. Huh. And before this is here, it's complete desert. Okay. So how is it that exactly where the temple was supposed to be is a thick strata of sandstone right below it? Some call it coincidence, I believe it to be God's work. <laughs> mm. So over here and even on the parallel side, there's a waterfall. Okay. But all these pipes that you see are going to be shooting water back up. Okay. As you see, there's maybe five pipes here, four here, three on top. Uh -huh. So as the water is coming down, water is shooting up. Mm. So what it represents is that in the path of spirituality, right? everybody starts, but only few can rise against the Maya mm. that is trying to take you away from the it. The tide of Maya. The tide of the Maya. Of Maya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you ascend the temple, yeah. you're ascending the flow of Maya, mm. fighting against it to achieve peace, mm -hmm. to achieve liberation. Okay. 
Okay, all these tiles that you see, yes. they're all nano tiles. Nano so tiles. If, if you take your, I don't want you to do it right now, but if you were to take your shoes off, because everybody's going to have their shoes off, uh -huh. you could feel no heat. Even at 55 degrees Celsius, you'll feel like it's 30. I see, I see. Yeah. So this tells a story about, it's from King Suleiman, from the Arabic civilization, Arabia. I see. So when King Suleiman was treading through the desert, on camelback with his entourage. The sun was beating down on him like it's beating down on us. Yes. At that point, we see a group of hobo birds. They saw his plight and they go on top of his head to encircle him, to provide him shade. They stretch their wings, provide him shade all around his journey. Okay. At the end of his journey, the king is really pleased and he says, ask me anything you want. So these birds, hoping for more power, ask him for golden crowns, just like the king has. Okay. So the king tells his blacksmith, go ahead, make him crowns. They wear the crowns and they start flying in the sky. They fly high with their eagles flying even higher. Okay. And they tell all the animal kingdom that now we're the kings, you guys listen to us. Uh -huh. As they're screaming that out loud, a human hunter hears this. And now he's not only sees food, but he sees Gold. the golden crown as well. Yeah. So you can see that he casts a net above them uh -huh. and these birds barely make it out alive while all their friends of the animal kingdom are laughing. And they go and they go sit on the porch of King Suleiman, mm -hmm. to which King Suleiman takes off their crown and smilingly says, that the invisible value of service, the invisible crown of service is more valuable than the visible crown of vanity. I see. So this teaches humility. You see Bhamiki Ji riding the Ramayana. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. there's that. Okay. Then Ayodhya. Okay, this is Ayodhya. Then their whole training all the way, all across. You see different incidents from their of life. Of course, of course. I see it now. I was looking up yeah. there. Yeah, you're looking, sorry, okay. you're looking up there. Yeah, yeah. So, right. below here. So anybody can walk up to one of these scenes uh -huh. and they can say, okay, fine, I understand the story, yes. but what do I gain from it? Mm -hmm. And that's the value that they gain from different incidents in their life. Okay. So it's not just a Swaminarayan no. thing. It's, it's a Hindu mandir. Yes. So it's BAPS Hindu mandir. BAPS Hindu yeah. mandir. Okay. So that's what makes this mandir unique, I would say. Yeah. One of the, one of the things, definitely. Mm -hmm. So this is where Sri Swaminarayan Bhagavan Vee has Akshar Purushottam. Okay. So we believe in our religion mm -hmm. that it's the God and the Guru. In order to achieve enlightenment, in order to achieve God, to understand Him, mm -hmm. you have to understand His most choicest devotee, mm -hmm. which is the Guru. The Guru. So currently it's Mahan Swami Maharaj. Yes. And then before him, the one that inspired this temple was Pramu Swami Maharaj. Yes. So here is the amphitheater. The amphitheater, all right. You're sitting on the ghats of Ganga. So now you don't have to go to India mm -hmm. to pray on Ganga. So you'll have actual Ganga Jal over here. Yes, actual Ganga Jal, actual Jal from Right. And mm -hmm. then in the middle, it's going to be represented by light. Light. Saraswati. Saraswati. Knowledge. Knowledge. Wisdom. Wisdom. Yes. So we have taken a brief tour of the mandir. Beautiful place. We, have, we looked around outside as well. So this, this mandir, it represents the closeness of ties between the people, the people of India, the Indian subcontinent, and the people of this region, the Middle East, the UAE, uh, and, and the people of Bolivia. And we have had time, ties, excellent ties between the two regions since times immemorial. For at least 5,000 years, India and the UAE have had trade and cultural and other relations, political relations, cultural relations, trade relations between each other from the days of the time when India was called Meluha by the people of Sumeria and Assyria, which uh, which is nowadays called the Indus Valley or Saraswati Sindhu civilization period of Indian history. So from that time itself, India had extensive ties with this region. So the ties between the two nations are not something that's happened in the last 50 years or last 20 years. It's been there for thousands of years. And there's this deep cultural and people-to-people uh, -people closeness that's always existed and this temple, this mandir is now a culmination of all that in the modern day 21st century and this obviously happened because of the excellent relations between India and the UAE uh, the Crown Prince of the UAE has magnanimously given this land and given the approval for this beautiful building to come up. And as we know, the relations between the two countries are extremely close and very robust. India has extensive trade relations with the UAE. Uh, I think India is UAE's number one trade partner. And there are uh, diplomatic relations, leader to leader, leader relations, there are trade relations. There is a proposal for a for a railway, undersea railway that will connect the UAE to India across the Arabian Sea. More than 2000 kilometers, if and when that happens, it's going to be a monumental feat of engineering, right? There are excellent uh, security relations with the two, the two countries. The two nations cooperate on a number of security issues, anti-terrorism and other, other things. Uh, so there is a tremendous amount of goodwill between, between the two nations, a tremendous amount of cooperation and synergy between the two nations and the leaders of the two nations. And this mandir is an indicator, a powerful indicator of the robustness and strength of the India-UAE 
relations. So it's going to be inaugurated in about 35 days time on the 14th of February by Prime Minister Mr. Modi himself. And we all look forward to that. But in the meanwhile, you all gained a small sneak peek at, at this magnificent structure. So that's me, Abhijit, signing off from the UAE. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.